First and foremost, I want to say rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. You were and still are an inspiration to those who consumed your work. You paved the way for countless mangakas and even went out of your way to help bring back canceled series like Taito Kubo's Bleach by writing a letter directly to Shonen Jump. For that, I will forever be grateful, as it is my favorite shonen anime of all time. So much so that my first and only tattoo is of Rukia. Dragon Ball's influence cannot be stressed enough. It has quite literally impacted geopolitical landscapes and cartel activity. Many in the anime community often make jokes about how Mexican drug cartels would have lower rates of activity on days in which Dragon Ball aired. And that is true, but there's something more important besides that. In Mexico, they had showings of Dragon Ball Super that were sent cease and desist letters from Toei Animation. It is the fact that Dragon Ball can unite people to fill out a stacked arena to consume this media that we see how much it is revered, specifically in Latin America and Japan. Sure, it is big in the anime community in general, but there's a special connection that may not be fully understood by someone looking on the outside. For many mangakas, Akira Toriyama was the torch that blazed the path for them, allowing for us to have the likes of Chainsaw Man, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Black Clover today. Dragon Ball has captured not one, but two generations, specifically millennials and zoomers. It has the distinction of being smack dab in the middle of two generations, with the Dragon Ball anime beginning in 1986. And even if Dragon Ball wasn't or isn't your favorite anime, at some point in time, you recognized it its importance. It's a testament to how its quality has stood the test of time, as a series that is almost 40 years old sits atop the shonen throne alongside the big three, One Piece, Bleach, and Naruto. Again, without Dragon Ball, none of these mangas or subsequent anime series would have existed. So it's important to talk about the man who's responsible for Dragon Ball. Akira Toriyama. Akira Toriyama was born in Kyosu, Japan on April 5th, 1955. He once remarked that his love for animation and drawing partially stems from Walt Disney's 101 Dalmatians, which came out in 1961. While Disney's cartoons may have gotten him initially hooked, the more important piece of work towards his development as a manga artist was Osamu Tezuka's Astro Boy, which aired from 1952 to 1968. During Akira Toriyama's high school life, he became engrossed with kaiju films, something that could also be seen as an influence in Dragon Ball. The bigger the enemy, the higher the stakes are in the fights. You could argue that the power scaling system that Dragon Ball uses is similar to one that kaiju films use. While Toriyama wanted to draw and have a creative design degree, his parents were strongly against it. He continued to draw, but instead of drawing manga right out of high school, he got a job at an advertising agency where he designed posters. After three long years, he quit the agency and soon submitted a piece to Weekly Shonen Jump for the Newcomer Award. Toriyama was in need of some cash, and he thought that this award would give him a surmisable amount of some for this time period. What Toriyama submitted, though, would not be allowed to win, as it was a parody of Star Wars, but the quality was certainly there. As such, his future editor Kazuhiko Torishima saw promise within him. Torishima sent Toriyama a telegram suggesting for him to continue drawing manga, and to send it to him if he had anything. At the age of 23, Akira Toriyama published his first work, which was Wonder Island. The first chapter of Wonder Island is about an ex-kamikaze pilot who crashed in the Pacific Ocean during World War II. It is a story about how the former pilot, Furusu, tries to escape the island for the next 35 years. Wonder Island was not considered a success by any means, but there still was a second chapter called Wonder Island 2. This chapter is a lot more satirical in nature, with appearances from Dirty Harry, C-3PO, King Ghidorah, and more. It was a second chance given by Kazuhiko Torishima to Akira Toriyama so that he could show off his talents. This is just one stepping stone in the long history of Toriyama though, and he would soon find success with Dr. Swamp. With the release of the first volume on February 4th, 1980, Akira Toriyama was set on the path towards success. He learned from his failures with Wonder Island, and with the help of Kazuhiko Torishima, it became one of the best-selling mangas of the 1980s. Dr. Slump is a science fiction comedy that builds on what Wonder Island was trying to do. It establishes a Raleigh Noromaki as the main character of the series. A Raleigh is a robot who is created by Senbei Noromaki. He is a goofy and lecherous inventor who is more than likely the inspiration for Professor Oak from Pokemon. It is important to note that Senbei is the titular character of Dr. Slump, but most of the stories revolve around his creation. In a Raleigh. There's an element of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein here, with a Raleigh playing a satire of the dumb and misunderstood Frankenstein's monster. Instead, she is a smart yet naive android who doesn't quite understand the world around her. Something that can be said about Frankenstein's monster as well, or the fact that he can't be accepted in this world. This is first and foremost a comedy series, and Dr. Slump does not shy away from the satire that Akira Toriyama found funny within Wonder Island. There is Superman, who is the antithesis to Superman. Instead of being tall, strong, and humble, Superman is short, fat, and pompous with a dash of stupidity. Superman flies with the power of Krypton, whereas Superman lies down on a skateboard and scoots through the streets of Penguin Village. There are even more Star Wars references, as there is one village police officer who wears a Stormtrooper-style helmet. 
It is mainly because of the endearment for American and Japanese media that I see why Araki and Toriyama got along so well. They both blended Western and Eastern cultures into something zany and wacky that you can't help but laugh from. And Japanese audiences seem to agree as the manga was massively successful and lended itself to an anime series that ran from April 8th of 1981 until February 19th of 1986. During that time, the anime had a whopping 243 episodes and I highly recommend checking out the show if you love Akira Toriyama's work on Dragon Ball. Ironically enough though, Toriyama said that he thought that Dr. Slump was going to flop and that he wanted to end the series after only six months after publishing the first installment. You have to think that with how Dr. Slump's success came to be and how it debuted at number two in the magazine's reader rankings that we may not have had Dragon Ball if they had cancelled it. What is even more insane is that when Dr. Slump began, Akira Toriyama had no idea where the story would go. It was only when his editor started to call that he would start to put something together, but it gets even crazier than this. Toriyama would think of each week's story as he drew them and then send the draft from Nagoya Airport to Tokyo. First off, most manga artists are incapable of doing this because you have to know what the outline or basis of your story is. It speaks to the talent that Akira Toriyama had that he could put the pieces together as he drew. And not only that, but that he had the balls to send his drafts through an air courier. Just imagine some deranged fan trying to steal it from the courier as he's like, Oh, here's the next draft for Dr. Slump. That's the only joke I'm going to make this video. Lastly on Dr. Slump, the manga was awarded the Shogakukan Manga Award for Shonen and Shoujo Manga in 1981. This is the equivalent of getting a Pulitzer Prize on a novel. Again, huge to consider how Toriyama almost ended the series in the fall of 1980. At the same time of Dr. Slump, Toriyama was working on other works such as Pole and Royd, Escape, Mad Maddock, and most notably, Chobit. Chobit is important because it's the last straw that broke the camel's back. This work was not popular, and Toriyama was furious that this was the case, and he tried to recreate it with Chobit too. It recentered its focus on spaghetti western films, something that Araki did with Steel Ball Run in the Jojo Bizarre Adventure series. Toriyama really loved western films, but he loved one other genre more than that, and that was martial arts films. Torishima, Akira Toriyama's editor, suggested that he should write what he loves, martial arts. Some of these films being Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon and Jackie Chan's Drunken Master. Toriyama agreed and he created the two-part manga called Dragon Boy in 1983. This story was about a boy who escorts a princess back to her home country and with this the flame was ignited for Dragon Ball. Dragon Boy evolved into Dragon Ball in 1984 and was quickly serialized. From 1984 to 1995 Dragon Ball was serialized and it has sold over 159.5 million Tankoban copies in Japan alone. Tankoban refers to thinly printed issues, something akin to the hardcover versus paperback for novels. As such, Dragon Ball became and is still one of the best-selling manga series of all time. What once started as another one of Toriyama's gag manga transformed into a martial arts manga that redefined the genre. In 1995, as a result of Dragon Ball, Weekly Shonen Jump hit a record high of 6.53 million copies circulated. Overall, the manga has sold over 300 to 350 million copies worldwide, on top of the copies sold in Japan. It is important to look back on Toriyama's previous work though, as it was all a process of trial and error. As a creator, he exuded everything that you needed to, believing in your work and adapting it to make sure it's the best that it can be. As new age creators, it's important to look at people such as Akira Toriyama because he didn't immediately burst onto the scene. He worked on it and honed his craft. It is why Dragon Ball, with its witty humor and amazing fight scenes, will forever be etched in the hearts of many. I don't want to minimize any of Toriyama's achievements though, because he also played a huge role in the video game world too. He was in charge of designing the characters for the video game series Dragon Quest. I think it can be inferred that without Akira Toriyama, JRPGs would not have the same market that it has now, specifically with Persona, Final Fantasy, and Xenoblade. All of the aforementioned series have been inspired by Dragon Quest, and that is in part due to Toriyama's artwork. That by itself would be amazing, but that wasn't the end of it. He also worked on Chrono Trigger and Blue Dragon as a character designer, and all comes full circle because both of these titles were inspired by Dragon Quest. Chrono Trigger and Blue Dragon were created in cooperation with Final Fantasy creator Hironobu Sakaguchi. So while you may think that Toriyama should be remembered strictly for Dragon Ball, and trust me, I understand the weight behind Dragon Ball, he is solely responsible for kickstarting the JRPG scene in my eyes. One could argue that Toriyama Thomas' illustrations helped elevate the content massively and allowed for a new wave of video games to come out. Despite the success of Dragon Ball, Akira Toriyama also worked on countless one-shots and paid tribute to several different mangakas, none more reoccurring than Hirohiko Araki's Jojo Bizarre Adventure. In 2012, he drew a contribution for the 25-year anniversary of Jojo, and more than anything, Akira Toriyama should be remembered for his love and passion for manga and anime. 
as well as JRPGs. His mangaka career would come to a close after the creation of Jocko the Galactic Patrolman, which is set before the events of Dragon Ball. Its 11 chapters would be the last piece of manga that Toriyama would draw and publish, but he was still involved with countless projects before his death. Some of these include Dragon Ball Z, Battle of Gods, and the sequel Resurrection F. Toriyama wrote the original script for Resurrection F. He also worked on Dragon Ball Super Broly and Dragon Ball Super Superhero working with the creators at every step. The last thing that Toriyama has his name tied to for now is Sandland, which is a one-shot that he made in 2000. There's a game releasing April 26th of this year that returns to the action RPG roots of Toriyama. He had written and designed the adventure for the game, and this may very well be the last work we see from Akira Toriyama, at least in the video game sphere. It is a testament to the power and intelligence as a creator that Akira Toriyama had as he left a legacy that would be remembered for decades to come. He not only redefined an anime genre, but also redefined JRPGs and video games in Japan as a whole. He's an inspiration to those who are creators and tells you don't give up, keep doing what you love, and soon you'll break through the mold. I highly recommend that you take a look into Dr. Slump and some of his other works, and I will note that in a time where it is easy to divide each other, it is heartwarming to see us come together as a community to mourn the loss of someone so special. I am sure that Akira Toriyama is smiling down at us from heaven or whatever higher power there is, proud of what he has accomplished and the legacy that he has left as well as the countless minds that he has inspired throughout the years, just as Osamu Tezuka's Astro Boy did for him. I have been Siren Zen, and thank you for watching. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama.